So CES 2023 is currently going on and these are the most interesting things that JBL has announced so far. Now first off, we do have an update for the highly anticipated JBL Pulse 5. Now initially we were supposed to get it in the summer of 2022, but it now looks like we're going to be getting it in the spring of 2023 and it's going to be retailing for $250. Now at first glance, the Pulse 5 looks identical to the Pulse 4. But personally, I'm very excited for the Pulse 5 because it's going to be having an all new speaker setup. Specifically, it's going to have a larger downward firing passive radiator, which is going to mean more bass. It now has a dedicated woofer for the mids and it now has a tweeter for the highs, which is going to mean better SMS separation. So my hope with the Pulse 5 is that it's going to sound better than the Flip 6 and sound almost as good as the Charge 5, but still also have an amazing looking light feature. Because right now with the Pulse 4, it sounds more like the Flip 5, so you're mainly just paying for the light feature. So if you've been holding out for the Pulse 5, I do feel that it's worth waiting for, but if you want a great sounding speaker right now, then I still highly recommend that you go for the Charge 5, because I am willing to bet that the JBL Charge 5 is going to continue sounding better than the Pulse 5. But also, I do have my fingers crossed that the Pulse 5 is going to sound better than the Flip 6. Now, next up, as a quick mention, JBL also announced an eco-friendly version of the JBL Clip 4 and the JBL Go 3. Now, besides these speakers just using more recycled materials, there are no new features here. But regardless, I've always been a really big fan of the JBL Clip 4. It's a great little speaker that you can throw onto your backpack or use it in the shower. Now, staying on the topic of speakers, JBL also announced a whole new lineup of soundbars, which are all due out on February 19th. Now, the most important thing about all of these soundbars is that there's finally a dedicated companion app for your soundbar. So among many other things, you're now going to be able to more easily adjust the EQ of your soundbar. These soundbars are also all going to have a voice assistant support, but personally, I don't like using voice assistants on my soundbars, but they all also have AirPlay. 2 support and they all have Chromecast support, but more importantly, they all have Dolby Atmos support. Some of them have a true Dolby Atmos support, as in they have built-in upward firing speakers, and some of them have virtual Dolby Atmos support, as in they don't have upward firing speakers. Now, this lineup consists of the 1300X, which has 11.1.4 channels with an external subwoofer and retails for $1,700. The 1000 has 7.1.4 channels with an external subwoofer and retails for $1,200. The 700 has 5.1.2 channels with an external subwoofer and retails for $900. The 500 has 5.2 channels with an external subwoofer and retails for $600. And finally, there's the 300, which has 5.0 channels with a built-in subwoofer and it's going to retail for $400. And personally, I'm most interested in the 300 because it's an all-in-one soundbar and I want to see how it stacks up to the Bose Smart Soundbar 600, the Sonos Beam Gen 2, and perhaps maybe even the Sony HT8 3000. But I'm also interested in checking out the 500 because it's like the 300 except it also has an external subwoofer. But the only downside about both the 300 and 500 is that these two soundbars don't have upward firing speakers like with the rest of JBL's new soundbars and like a lot of other soundbars that are starting to come out now. And I also want to quickly point out that JBL has announced a new lineup of speakers that you can attach to your car or boat, which they're calling the JBL Rally Bar. And it comes in multiple sizes and prices range from $650 to $1,000. Now, personally, I think this soundbar is pretty cool because it also has a built-in light feature, but I think that this soundbar would be extremely cool if you could attach it to your bike. But now let's turn our attention to JBL's headphones. Now JBL just announced their Tour 1 M2 headphones. Kind of looks like we're going for a Sony naming scheme here. Now personally, I've never really been a big fan of JBL's headphones, but we can give these a shot because these could be a good upper mid-range option, which are going to be retailing for $300 and they're due out in the spring. But also, JBL just announced their Tour Pro 2 wireless earbuds. And the really unique thing about these earbuds is that their case has a built-in screen. Now, from the screen, you can see things like your battery levels, you can see your phone's notifications, you can switch between your ANC settings, and you can also skip through your music. Now, personally, I don't really think that this is gonna catch on, but we will see. These earbuds are due out in the spring, and they're gonna be retailing for $250, but personally, I do feel that you're gonna be paying a premium 
for that built-in screen in the case. But finally, JBL also announced a new gaming headset called the JBL Quantum 910. Now, there's going to be an Xbox version and a PlayStation version, but as usual, I do recommend that you go with the Xbox version because this way you're going to have maximum compatibility because you're going to be able to use it with an Xbox, PlayStation, PC, or your phone. Now, the cool thing about this headset is that it has head tracking and it works with your console and it also has active noise cancellation. Now, the Quantum 910 is due out in March and is going to be retailing for $300 but JBL also announced the Quantum 360 which doesn't have the head tracking or the active noise cancellation but is going to be retailing for $130. And these are the main things that I found interesting that JBL has announced so far at CES 2023, and these have been my initial thoughts. Now, as more companies continue to announce new products at CES 2023, I'll let you know and also share my quick thoughts with you. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.